Okay, today I am going to show a tutorial on running Ubuntu. This is version 9.04 and running it as a live CD. In other words, booting from the CD and running that without changing anything on your hard drive. First off, when it starts, you want to use English as your default language, obviously, unless you are familiar with another language. Your first one is try Ubuntu without changing anything on my hard drive, which is your default choice. Just choose it. Now your boot process is going to take about two minutes on most computers. I would recommend running Ubuntu live on a desktop computer hooked up straight to the internet. That always works out best. If you only have a laptop, I would recommend you connect it directly to the internet rather than going over the wireless. About two out of three times Ubuntu will recognize and connect to the internet with the wireless card, but about a third of the time it's been troublesome. So. Uh, desktop is the best choice, laptop secondary, if you can get it plugged directly into the internet. After Ubuntu starts up, oh yeah, I also want to tell you too, if you want to get Ubuntu as a download and you're familiar with um, burning ISO files, I can do that as a tutorial later too. Go to Ubuntu.com, this version I'm running is 9.04, desktop version. You can also contact Ubuntu on the left side of the page says get Ubuntu and they will actually mail you a CD for free it can take up to like six weeks or more to get it to you but if you're not familiar with burning ISO files and making your own disk that's the way to go so now what Ubuntu is doing is it's configuring all the devices when you hear the sound of Ubuntu coming on then you know your sound device has been grabbed too so your sound card is working uh, the one thing I like really a lot about Ubuntu is it uses Firefox, which most of you are familiar with. And if, you, if you're not surfing with Firefox, you're surfing dangerously using Internet Explorer. Okay, that's the sound telling us we've successfully got the sound card configured. Now you'll see the desktop. It's a very simple type of desktop here. This is the GNOME desktop. Up on the top should be an icon that's very familiar to you. It's the Firefox icon. So go ahead, click on that. Start Firefox. And it operates just the same as Firefox does and every other operating system too. For some reason I got this little error pop up too, but it's not affecting anything. Okay, to make sure we're connected to the internet, we're going to type in www.google.com to make sure we've successfully connected. Okay, we're at the Google page. So, what we're going to do next is, this is kind of a workaround too, you can use Ubuntu to surf the net, but you're not going to be able to play videos. Well, there's a workaround that you can do to where you can actually play videos on YouTube or other video sharing sites. First, I would recommend go to YouTube. So we're going to go to the YouTube site. Okay. We're at YouTube. Now I'm going to log into my account. Okay, I'm at my account. Now I'm going to attempt to play a video. And as you can see, you get the screen up there saying you don't have the proper edition of Adobe Flash. So click on the little blue link there. And it will take you to the Adobe Flash site. Now click the little down arrow and at the very bottom is the .deb install of Adobe. And it says for Ubuntu 8 point something plus. Click on that click on the big yellow button and just follow the menus now you're going to first download something called an install package don't be scared because this stuff it just it's all pretty much all you do is just answer questions it's pretty self-explanatory what it'll do first is it'll download the deb install package then it will extract the package it also has to install a thing called dependencies which are other files it needs 
Um, you're just going to answer basic questions and choose all the default answers to the questions and it should go fairly easy. This is not typically the way you should do it, but it's a workaround that works. And realize, too, after you do this, and you will be able to watch videos, as soon as you exit Ubuntu and go back to Windows, it's all going to be blanked out because nothing's installed on your hard drive. So as long as your machine is running and the Ubuntu is running, you're going to be able to watch videos. But as soon as you shut it down, the next time you go onto, um, you, uh, the next time you start Ubuntu, you're going to have to do this all over again if you also want to watch videos along with surfing. So now we've got the package completely installed. Go back to the YouTube. Now this is a mistake some people make. They try to play it right now and they're going, okay, what went wrong? It's still not playing. What you have to do is you have to actually shut down Firefox and restart it because the Adobe Flash acts like a plug-in. So you have to actually restart Firefox. Then we're going to go back to the YouTube page. And this time through it should successfully play the video. You will probably notice too that as you use Firefox on Ubuntu, even after uh, even though Ubuntu itself takes a long time to load off the CD, you're going to notice the Firefox is way more responsive than it is on Windows or other operating systems. Linux is a very streamlined operating system. So now we're going to click on it. Good morning, everybody, on this. Okay, you can see there's my video playing. That's my June 20th vlog on my Suburban Writer site. So now we've got it to where we can play videos. Another feature, look up in your applications, up at the top, and you'll notice on the first menu choice, you have a screen capture utility. So go down, open the screen cap utility, and what we are going to do is we're going to use the screen capture utility, and we're just, as a demonstration, I'm just going to capture a picture of the desktop itself. So click on it. Okay, that's what we've captured. That's what it, we're going to capture. Go ahead, click, and it will be saved to the desktop, so it'll be easy to find. Now, naturally, when you shut down Ubuntu, it's going to get erased, so how do we save the screen capture? Here, we're going to take a look at it with the picture viewer. Okay, we've captured it successfully. Now, we've got to come up with a way to save it. I would suggest get yourself a cheap USB key type of device and plug it in. I'm going to take my USB key, plug it into a USB port from the computer. Which I have an extension cable just set up that reaches that computer. There's my USB thumb drive. And the nice thing about Ubuntu is it takes care of all these things for you. You don't even need to uh, really do much of anything. You're going to see there's the screen pop up with all of my files on my USB key. I'm going to take and move it off to the side just a little bit. Then we're going to take and drag and drop the picture file right into my USB thumb drive. Now it says to overwrite because I've obviously saved it before when I did it the last time. Go ahead, now the file is copied on my thumb drive. Close it off, and the file's on my thumb drive, so it's saved. So even though it's going to be erased from the Ubuntu desktop, I still have a copy of it. And I encourage you to look around. There's a lot more features, a lot more applications. Check everything out. Uh, there's nothing really you can do that you're going to mess up anything permanently because basically you just uh, shut down the system and try it over again. Ubuntu is very nice, very friendly, very easy to use. And when you're ready to shut down, go to the top right, click, choose shut down menu, and there you're done. Pull the disk out of the drawer 
and go back to Windows then when you're done everything's erased